everyone! It's Erin Anderson with the Erin Anderson Betrayal Trauma Coaching. I am super excited that you have tuned in today. Let's get talking about how to heal from betrayal trauma. Welcome back to another episode of The Other Side of the Struggle. Uh, I'm so excited to be with you guys today. I have another fabulous guest speaker with me today. We have Jeannie Spear with us. And um, let me tell you a little bit about Jeannie. She and I have been chatting back and forth for the last couple of weeks. Um, she's been talking about like healing trauma. But the thing that I really love about Jeannie is how she uses god so much in her healing work and in her story you just got such a big presence with her and that's so important to me because you know as you guys have listened to to my podcast and you've heard me he's also a really big part of my healing journey and honestly if i had to say if there's anything to do to heal from any types of trauma it is 100% to rely on God. And if you don't believe in, in God, then your highest form of love, right? And it's that that high, right? And so this is why I had Jeannie on the podcast today is to talk about like what it looks like to heal with God and what are the results that we get when we finally lean into that. So without further ado, I want to welcome Jeannie on. Well, thank you very much, Erin. I'm excited to be here and I've loved getting to know you and and hear, hear your story and your strengths well thank you i appreciate that so i would love the audience to kind of get to know you and your story just a little bit if you're okay to share that sure sure i am um i was married 48 years when i quote unquote accidentally found out about my husband's betrayal he had been sick and i had been taking care of him so i was a caregiver and not a happy marriage Anyway, throughout, um, I was kind of the last person on his totem pole he was concerned about, mm. but he was facing his mortality and he was praying in the middle of the night, quote unquote, praying, and it woke me up and he said certain things that made me realize he had had an affair and he kept saying, oh God, Jeannie can never find out. Jeannie can never find out. She'll leave me. And then the most horrific thing he said is, I, I need to get a hold of her to apologize for ruining her life. And that's at that moment, I knew that I was not going to stay in the marriage because he doesn't want God to know. He doesn't want, he's telling God not to let me find out that he had had this affair, a 28 year affair but yet he's concerned about taking care of her still. And the affair actually only stopped when he got sick. And it was a pretty horrific affair. She was a, an active participant. Mm. So to me, it was devastating. Um, I had no idea. I suspected nothing. I trusted him because he went through all the motions. He acted the part. But in looking back, I could see how very much I was gaslit, how very much he manipulated me and others around him. Um, so over a course of a few years, I, I divorced him, but my pain was so intense. There were times I couldn't function. Yeah. There were times I could not think, I could not feel. And, and it shocked me how much physical pain I had. And I'm sure a lot of your listeners have had that physical pain. I developed a heart issue. Wow. And I researched that because I thought that's crazy. But I had so much pain in my heart that sometimes I was bent over in pain. Mm -hmm. So I researched it. And yes, trauma, severe trauma can cause health issues, including heart oh, issues. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Heart so, issues, liver, gut, mm -hmm. brain, like you name it. Yeah. And it, it's insane. Yeah. Like I've heard so many people 
when when I say, you know, you're having a trauma response when they're talking about like their pain, they're like, ah, uh, the tra- like 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 that stuff doesn't affect you, affect you physically. And I'm like, no, 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 actually, your emotions store in your body. Yes. You know, they really do. And so I I completely and utterly believe you that, you know, yes. that that type of an emotional pain does cause actually a, a disruption in our mitochondria. Yes, that's that's exactly right. And so I hope any of your listeners, listeners realize that if they're having physical sensations, like you've just described, that that they are there that is a reaction of, of their trauma. Mm-hmm. But through a few, <clears throat> excuse me, through a few weeks of my, of my trauma, and it did take me quite a while to heal. Um, I I knew I wasn't going to let it control me, and I was in a lot of pain one afternoon and uh, kind of pacing around, crying, angry, hurt. Never really had denial because I knew it for sure it was true, but I felt like I couldn't handle it anymore. And I prayed very, very hard and said, I, I can't do this. This is going to kill me. And I can't do this. You've got to take the pain away. And he did. My pain, everything was just lifted. And I felt like I was being embraced. It was a physical sensation mm-hmm. that I felt like I, I was being embraced, embraced by Christ. And it was lifted so much. It didn't go away completely because I feel like I needed to heal. And in order to heal, I had to be reminded, let's say. So I still had all the sensations, but they were very much diminished, very much in control. Mm -hmm. And because of that, I felt I knew that God was with me and that everything I was going to do from that time forward I would do with his help yeah beautiful um, you know I love that because the thing is is that's very similar to to my story you know uh-huh. I just I had gotten to a point where I just could not handle it anymore mm-hmm. right I just couldn't handle the pain I couldn't handle the hurt the betrayal and, and especially like all the thoughts that were coming up about myself you know right like what the heck what was wrong with me? Like, why couldn't I be lovable? Like, why do, why do people think they can hide things from me? Like all of these, these things, like what is wrong with me? Right. right. And so common response. And it's really interesting. It totally traumas response. Right. And it's really interesting that when you sit there and say, something's wrong with me, something's wrong with me, something's wrong with me, mm-hmm. your brain responds. Likewise, it creates something wrong with you. Right. Right. And so it's like, when we heal and I, I love this you know this topic because if you think about scriptural references to um christ and his work and the healing glory that he did you know he healed people on a mental emotional physical and spiritual level exactly you know a complete and utter transformation. And so once we finally just give one of those areas to him, just one, just one, everything else starts to come back up. You know what I mean? I I like that. I like that example, giving him just one. I had not thought about that because I was just saying, take it all away. Mm -hmm. Take it. I don't want it. I can't deal with it. Um, but it was just one action on his part. So that kind of goes along with that one action on his part, embracing me and taking away the deep, deep, deep pain that I couldn't function with. Mm-hmm. Kind of yeah. goes back to elder Bednar's talk, the one <laughs> um, he does so much for the one. And my scripture of choice became, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Oh, I love that. Like hanging up around my house. A lot of my relief aside lessons, I take a, a painting of that that says that because that became my mantra. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That doesn't mean there's painful steps along the way. Yeah. <laughs> doesn't mean I'm going to slip, um, but I can do it. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you know, there's really nothing that we can't do with him. You know what I mean? 
Yes, yes. Uh, by ourselves, absolutely. Like there's some things you just cannot do. But with him, all things are totally possible. Yeah. And and you, you know, you and I are both saying this here that it uh, to completely and utterly heal takes an act of faith. It is an act of faith. It always has been an act of faith. And you know, I remember thinking to myself when I was going through, you know, my trauma, Mm -hmm. If he was just in front of me, if Christ could just stand in front of me and touch me, I know I'd be healed. And it wasn't until like I, I, I really considered that. And I was like, you know what? I'm actually putting a limit on his power. Thinking okay. that he has to be right in front of me in order to heal mm -hmm. me. Like, no, he can do it without being in front of me. True. And once I learned to trust True. that, right? Once I learned to trust that and really lean into that, oh my goodness, you're right. Like he started teaching me some really amazing things. He didn't, he didn't take it all away from me all at once, mm -hmm. right? It it took some time, and I would say even now, like I'm still learning so many beautiful, beautiful lessons, right? That I just never considered before, like. For example, there's something I've been working on for years, right? And because it's taken me time to get the result that I want, and it's starting to come. Like, I can start to see, see it now, right? Good. But it's been a really hard road. And the thing is, is I'm like, what else do I need to do? Like, like I've been praying. I've been asking. Like, I hear you, but, like, on this subject you are silent why what do you need from me like what what am i supposed to do and i was reading actually you know in the brother of jared and it talks about like christ saying what would you have me do what would you have me do and i was like oh my gosh like that's the answer right it's not about what i'm doing anymore but me actually asking him to do something as well and once I've started doing that, that's when things start coming to pass. And so it's like, you know, it's all about having this relationship with God or your higher power. Like to truly heal, that's exactly what it is. Mm -hmm. You know, it took me a year and a half to finally get to a place where, you know, I felt really, really safe and secure in myself. You know, um, I still remember the day my husband's like, I've been lying to you. I have been still looking at porn. I'm still struggling with it. Um, and I'm just like, tell me about that, right? Like, there was no emotional, like, baggage. There was, pain. like, nothing, no pain. No. And I was shocked. I was like, hold on a second, like, we have got to experience this moment like there's there's no pain. I'm not angry. I'm not taking it on myself. Mm -hmm. I'm not blaming myself. I'm still okay. I'm happy. I'm safe. I'm good. I'm totally good. And it's from that, that really beginning when I was just like, okay, like you're saying, take it. And I'm like, God, I'll do your will. I, I, me doing it this way is not working. And I kind of, exactly. exactly. And I kind of, I, I, I explain this kind of like, um, a Rubik's cube, you know, my uh, 14 year old, he loves Rubik's cubes. He's, you know, constantly messing with them and, and trying to get the fastest time possible i think he's solved a rubik's cube in about 10 seconds right so he's oh my really, goodness yeah he's really oh. good he's really oh good goodness. at it um but the thing is is once we start with that rubik's cube like if you hand it to me <laughs> it, it i'm not gonna solve that in 10 seconds right and i might not even solve it at all <laughs> but we give it to somebody who knows how to do it and they can show us how to do this, how to get how to solve it quicker, how to be really fast at it, how to amp up our time 
to heal quicker, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, it would seem like a year and a half is a long time, but considering the 10 years I stayed stuck in the energy, a year and a half was nothing. That's true. And that's really a good point for your listeners to realize uh, because I've had clients that are in to five years and still really suffering. Yeah. Um, so there, we each have our own timeline. Mm -hmm. But I really like your comments of um, faith. I expected this from God. I expected this. I expected this. But then when you turn it around and say, I have the faith to do what you want me to do. And I think a lot of women in trauma, and I'm including men too, but more women experience it. Um, they they wonder why God wasn't there for them. And they, they, it can really be a struggle of their faith. It can really test their faith and their relationship with God. So I just I just want to to remind anybody listening that if you are struggling, there is a way out of that struggle. Absolutely. And it may be tiny, tiny steps for you. It was a big whoosh for me. It was a big whoosh for you. But it isn't that way for all, for all, for everyone. Even I've got a couple clients that were strong in their faith and, and then this happened and they started questioning. Mm -hmm. So if you use the tiny bit of faith you have, and it's okay to question, it's okay to say, God, why weren't you there for me? As long as you open your heart and listen to his answer. So I think that's kind of the clue for a lot of people that might be struggling with their faith and with healing with Christ. Take a minute or two or three or an hour or an afternoon and focus on what one thing can I do today with thy help to heal? Mm -hmm. um, some people, if they stay in their marriage, it, it works and the spouse works hard. Some people stay in their marriage and then they're, they're in trauma for years and years and years because the spouse isn't working they're or leaning on christ but we each have to have our own little individual relationship with christ your your example of i wanted christ right in front of me what came to me my mind is christ is right in front of you we just can't see him mm -hmm. spiritually he is in front of us spiritually he is around us i don't think we can comprehend his power that he can be there for me and you at the same time yeah as well the other millions of people yeah Isn't that amazing? but he has the power we don't have so i just if i sound like i'm rambling i apologize but i know that i've had a few clients that just said god's not here god's not here god's not here nothing i do i can't feel him but in working with them and getting them to say there's one thing i can do there's just one thing i can do today if that is sit and breathe for five minutes and say god i want to heal that's that's the one thing yeah but Christ can be there in all of our healing, all of our steps. When we're in deep pain, he's holding us up. Yep. Yeah. Put prints in the sand kind of yeah. story where, you know, there's only one footprint in the sand. And that's God says, that's when I was carrying you. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And, and you he know, carries this. I got to tell you, I, I've been in that situation, you know, where I'm like, God doesn't care. <laughs> right. If he cared uh -huh. about me, he wouldn't allow this kind of stuff to happen, right? right? We've and all said that, I think. <laughs> I think we have. I really think we have. But here's the deal. You and I would not be in the situations we're in now had we not had the experiences we've had, you know? Mm -hmm. And I, I, I talk about this in, in I call it the, the, the precious diamond soggy box, <laughs> right? uh theory and it's like you know um here's god he's he's got this beautiful billion dollar diamond right and he's shaped it and he's fastened it just for you there's not a single person on earth that doesn't want that diamond right and all the things we could do with with that kind of wealth right but he tests our faith first by grabbing a box out of the sewer, right? It's been sitting there. It's ripe. It's It's been floating for a bit, mm -hmm. right? In the sewer. And he wraps up that diamond in that sewage, right? 
And the thing oh, is, this... the thing is, is you look at that box and you're like, yuck. If I touch that thing, I'm going to die, right? <laughs> I'm going to get a paper cut and I am going to die. Like, it's going to be bad. But the thing is, is we have to remember that that diamond is still there. You know? It doesn't diminish, even though the diamond might be dripping in sewage, right? It doesn't diminish the value of that diamond. It's still very, very valuable. And for me, that diamond was absolutely all the trauma I went through. It, that, the, the, the box, I should say, was the trauma. But was a... the, the knowledge I've gained, um, building a business around that kind of knowledge, you know, helping mm-hmm. women heal from trauma and build their own businesses because of it right and doing the same thing i've been doing that is so valuable right so valuable and like the wisdom oh my gosh the things that he teaches me it's beautiful beyond compare and the thing is is we just have to trust him enough to know that that diamond is in that box right mm-hmm. and if we're saying all if all we're saying is the box yeah, it's going to be hard to trust him. I love that. I love that analogy. The whole time you're talking, I'm thinking, who who is the diamond? Oh, we are. We are. We are the diamond. And I just, I love that analogy because you feel like you're in the sewer and you're in so much pain. And sometimes your family doesn't believe you or doesn't support you. Um, community doesn't support you. Are you? You live in painful silence and share your pain with no one, but Christ is there for all of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's he, not something you can hide from him. No, you can't hide it from him. He already knows your pain, but rarely does he step in and take over without you asking him. Mm-hmm. And then it's just long enough to get you back to where you can heal. Mm-hmm. I mean, even, even Christ in Gethsemane was in so much pain and he said, I, God, I, he's, Father, I can't do this. I can't do this. Take it away from me. Mm-hmm. And yeah. it wasn't taken away from me. He had the strength to finish it. Um, some pain we'll never be able to comprehend. But um, look, looking for Christ in, in small things, I think we, we grow so much in our pain. We don't want it. Mm-hmm. I didn't want any of this. I wanted to be totally faithful, wonderful without any pain and it's just not the way the world is set up no christ suffered Mm -hmm. and he knows our pain and he's the only one that can really feel it and and take it away from us to help us get through take it away long enough to do the next step to heal yeah you know i love what you were saying here too because you're saying you know like victim blaming is a thing there's a lot of shame around so you know much. what what the victim has gone through right yes um we hear like the worst possible advice ever um towards victims that have gone through deep betrayal like right you should have just given in more sex right like right. horrible advice yes. horrible advice uh well you must have done something to create that right mm-hmm. horrible mm-hmm. advice mm-hmm. um Or honestly, sometimes it's also just as painful to hear, oh, you married a loser, right? That's true. That's true. And it's still your fault. It's still your fault. It's like, well, Mm -hmm. thanks so much for having, having faith in my decisions. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you know, the thing, the thing of the matter is you do need someone who understands you when you have gone through this kind of stuff you are so fragile and so the 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 least little thing can either make you or break you right right and this is why we're saying like you know there is good advice out there there's really good advice out there there's really good therapists out there there's there's people out there that totally know how to help you Jeannie and i 
right? We we know how to help people going through this kind of stuff because we've been there, we've done it. Mm-hmm. We know what it feels like. We're going to be gentle with you, but also, you know, let you know, like, this is what it takes to, to heal. But really, if you want the deep-seated healing, there's nobody, nobody, even between you and I, but there's there's nobody that knows it better than Christ. Right. And the way that he heals it is he literally takes the infection out, that that emotional, that mental, that spiritual, and even physical infection out, and he replaces it with love for you. And I think this is sometimes where we get stuck, where we get into the I don't hear him phase, right? And I hear this in you know, both men and women is, is just that I don't deserve love. And so we bat it away every single time. If we don't actually consider ourselves as worthy and deserving of love, this is something that's going to keep us stuck in the trauma consistently over and over and over again. It isn't until we trust that, that we are lovable even if people on this earth have, have proven something different, all it doesn't prove that you're unlovable. What that has proven mm-hmm. to you is that they're broken. That is it. You know, that kind of goes back to, to, to what I said about the tiny steps. Mm-hmm. It, when someone is so beaten down, they can't feel love. They can't feel anything for themselves but shame. Here again, if you can just do one tiny thing and realize, yes, there is a tiny thing. There is a little glimmer of hope. It's like the candle in the corner. There's yeah. a little glimmer of hope because we are God's children. Mm-hmm. And that makes us worthy. And that makes us lovable. Because we have had an earth life that has beaten us down. That is Satan. Yeah. Satan wants us to feel that way. Yeah. And you get caught in this rumination of I'm not good enough. I wasn't good enough for him. No one understands me. This is my fault. Your priesthood leaders, I think most priesthood leaders are great, but there are priesthood leaders that are clueless. Mm-hmm. And and I don't fault them. It's a cultural type stuff. I don't yeah. fault them. They're trying their best, but they also have a concern for the unrepentant, for the sinner. They also have a concern. They're sometimes um, more concerned for the person who has sinned than the person that was victimized because they don't understand the pain. And many women don't feel like they can share the pain. Yeah. But you can tell Christ anything. Mm-hmm. I I even swore in my prayers a few times. I did. Okay. Oh, I swore well, at him too. Oh man, I like not Let's put I, that I, out there for other that people makes, that are feeling yes, guilty. That makes me so happy to hear you say that too, because I was like, I like when you get that angry, you you've got to let it out. And too. you know the thing is, is he doesn't judge you for it. No. Yeah, of course no. he wants you to 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 speak with love and respect to him, but he also understands that you're human. Right. You're not perfect. And he's and not hurt. gonna judge you and you're hurting. You're hurting so bad. And so he's not judging you. And so honestly, like if we've got to deal with that kind of emotion, what a better place to let that out. I agree. I was really scared the first time I told somebody I swore in my prayer and it was my stake president that I told. And I said, I've got so much repenting to do. And he said, Jeannie, you have nothing to repent of. And that comforted me so much to think, okay, here's my stake president who knows it all and has heard it all. And I just told him I swore in my prayers and he's not judging me. And that made me just confirm to me that Christ was speaking through him too, Mm -hmm. because I needed some affirmations besides a, a physical affirmation from a priesthood leader was beautiful. Um, and I think most priesthood leaders do their absolute best. I agree. I do too. And I think I think that if we are trying to incorporate Christ into every little aspect of our life, and you know, if you're driving down the road and you're feeling something, just do a quick 
quick little prayer or just say, take a breath and say, just give me five minutes of peace. Things like that are going to add up and add up and add up. And you're going to be able to feel that and you are going to be able to heal. And I want to tell everybody here, you can heal. Absolutely. It takes steps. It's not, you don't get down, say, Christ, heal me and get up and be done. That's a pretty rare thing that happens. We hear of those kind of miracles. But we're here on earth to learn, to grow, to take steps, mm -hmm. to fall, to get back up, yep. to give advice, to take advice, mm -hmm. and always ask Christ to help you get through your trials. Absolutely. And then listen, listen, give him the spirit, give him the open heart. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And sometimes, you know, that heart looks like it's been kicked and bruised and shattered and broken. And the thing is, is we have a craftsman as a king. Yes. This is why, like, God loves broken things. He loves broken things. And he loves whole things, too. But you, as his child, are so beloved. So beloved. He wants to pick you up. He wants to put you on, on his lap and just let you cry in his shoulder, right? I love that analogy. <laughs> he oh, absolutely does. And the thing is, is he's just... When... when Oh, my goodness. I'm going to start getting emotional. But um, <laughs> <laughs> when you understand how deeply... God loves you and how kind and gentle he is and how precious you are to him. This pain transforms into a relationship with the greatest being in the cosmos. And you understand how loved you really, really are. Yes. That understanding brings a confidence to you. And when you don't know what to do, I mean, there's still times that I don't know what to do. I'm just like, wow, that's a, that's a new one, Lord, right? That's a new one. <laughs> that's a new one. Um, but I still know he's there and he's still walking me through it. He's never mm -hmm. abandoned me, but he has carried me. He has carried you. Absolutely. And I still think he does carry me sometimes. Oh, I know he carries me a lot. <laughs> Still does. A lot oh. because one thing and then another and you look back and you think, oh, I really survived that. Even little things, I really survived that. And then take a minute and say, thank you, God, because I couldn't have done it on my own. Yeah. Maybe that's another aspect to show gratitude to Christ and you might feel him more. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, love it. Love it. So, one small thing. You know, for me, you know, just to wrap things up. If we can just desire, like if our greatest desire is to have the pain taken away. If we can take a little bit of that, that desire and turn it towards scripture turn it towards prayer even if it's five minutes a day mm -hmm. putting some drops in that emotional bank account and realizing that the whole entire bank account the banker is is christ he's he's the one that owns the bank he's the one that does the transferring and and, and things like that but we're the ones that are responsible for putting the deposits in Right. And he matches it by, like, actually he does more than match it. He, he like, <laughs> increases it every time we put just a little bit back in, right? Mm -hmm. If you guys can realize how important it is to focus on the love that is really there, to realize that it never left. Right. You got distracted, and nobody's blaming you for that. Right? Right. Hurt is distracting. Like, Very. I'm sorry, if I'm if I've got a broken leg, I'm not gonna go out on a dance floor. <laughs> right? No way. 
because I want a hospital and I want somebody to drug me up and I want somebody to take care of that leg, right? Take care of me. Take I, care of me. Yes, please take care of me. It's okay if we're in that space. But we don't want to stay in that space. And so the thing that we do need to do is try every single day just for a little bit to create a habit to focus on love. Mm -hmm. Very well said. Because he's waiting. He's there in our space when we allow to ourselves to feel him. And I love what you said, just a few minutes of scriptures, just a few minutes of prayer. Um, some people have lots of kids and they don't have time for a lot of prayer and a lot of scripture reading. Right. Um, uh, one of my best friends, she said the only scripture reading she did was on the toilet. She would read one or two scriptures because her kids <laughs> would leave her alone in the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> I always thought that was strange. And then I got thinking about it. You know what? God's going to reward those efforts. Yep. Yep. <laughs> I might have to try that. <laughs> yeah, you you have little ones. Mine are all gone, so um I got plenty of time, but um I just want to to reiterate that Christ is our savior. And it's not just something we say when you are in such deep trauma, it's something you can feel. Yeah. Because I literally feel like he saved me. I do too. That day. And he continues to save me daily. Yeah. And for those of you out there that are still in the deep, deep hurt, please know that there is hope and there is help and that you will heal and you will be stronger, mm -hmm. spiritually and emotionally stronger. And you'll be a good example to your families. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to say, you know, I love that you're going to like the influence is going to be crazy, but I almost hear someone, one of our listeners saying, I tried that, right? Oh, but I'm yes. going to say, I'm going to say, if you tried it for a day and then stopped, I want you to try it for a week. If you've tried it for a week and then stopped, I want you to try it for a month. The point here, too, is to try that five minutes a day consistently until consistently. it becomes a habit, right? Again, just remember, because if you want things to work for you, you are consistent with the pain. You are consistent with the distraction. This is part of the reason why we can't stay stuck is that consistency to stay stuck. And nobody's mm -hmm. blaming you for that, right? I mean, no, this, the, no. this is the way the human nature is. But if you have, if you're going to reverse that cycle, you have to do something else consistently to reverse it. And and it will come. Mm -hmm. Meager efforts are rewarded too. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And it's okay to say, God, I'm not getting it. I'm still trying. I'm going to do what Jeannie and Aaron said. Just keep trying. Yeah. And it will come. If you like to, if you like to work out, you don't stop. If you want big muscles, you don't stop. Mm -hmm. If you right. want to eat, you don't stop. And when you slip, I slip a lot, but you get back up. You get back to the gym again. You get back to your scriptures again. Mm -hmm. You look yourself in the mirror and say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Yes. And he will. And he will. And it may take longer than you want, but he will. Yes. Absolutely. Jeannie, thank you so much for hanging out with us. Where can people find you? Oh, thank you. Um, my website is JeannieSpearCoaching.com. Okay. And I do have a Facebook page, Jeannie Spear Coaching as well. Fabulous. Go check out Jeannie, you guys. Um, you're also welcome to come hang out with me sometimes. Uh, I've got the Unashamed Image Program starting again soon. And I will get you guys the dates on that. If you're interested, schedule that call, you guys. Schedule a call with me. Go get a call with Jeannie if you guys are interested in that. And if you're really looking to expedite your healing, if you would like more Christ in your life as well, Jeannie and I are great at being able to help with that. So 
let's have a chat. Okay. Thank you. Definitely. Thanks, Jeannie, for being on with us. And we will see you guys on the other side. Bye. We wish you all well. Yes. <laughs> Bye, you guys. Hey guys, thanks so much for hanging out with me today and listening in on this podcasting episode. Don't forget to 